What's up everybody, this is Jason with MDI and today we are giving you an in-depth review of the Mozwa Air and the Zhiyun Crane. Now these are both single-handed operating gimbals and they have become very popular in the most recent times because everyone's either going to mirrorless or something like that and they don't need the dual handle type gimbals. So without further ado, let's get started on the build quality. The build, both of them are made out of metal. So that's great. Nice, strong, powerful motors. The Mozwa Air is able to handle up to a 5D Mark III at its heaviest at 5.5 pounds, whereas the Zhiyun Crane handles more of the mirrorless cameras and it can go up to about 3.9 pounds. Now, as you take a look through uh, the actual build itself, they're a relatively about the same height in overall length, but if you come down here a little bit, you'll notice that the Mozwa Air has a slightly shorter handle, whereas the Zhiyun Crane has a longer handle, but the Mozwa Air has a thicker handle, whereas the Zhiyun Crane has a thinner handle. Um, in our tests when running with these two gimbals, we didn't really notice that much of a difference between having a shorter or longer handle, and the reason is because on the bottom of both of these, there's a quarter 20 screw. So what we've done is we've put a little tabletop tripod made by B Stable Came, or cam, about $15, and what we did was we can use this as an extended handle, like so, or if you wanted to, in some of the footage, you saw me have one handle out, so that it kind of gives me just a little bit more of the off-axis stabilization where I was running with this. Another cool thing about having this attached to the bottom is if you really wanted to, you could probably achieve literally like a jib-like shot going from all the way up here to slowly bringing it down. Now, right now I don't have the gimbal on, but that is a couple things you can do. So one of the reasons why we purchase this tabletop uh, tripod is because not only is it portable, but it makes it a lot easier to balance your single-handed gimbal. Now, back in the day of dual-handed gimbals, you'd need to have a big, cumbersome stand just to get everything ready and balanced. With this, it's portable, it's light, it's small, it has dual purpose, and it's able to be set up very, very quickly. Now, in the case that you don't have this, you can actually balance it just on the little base itself. You might want to have someone just hold it down as you're moving all the adjustments. But other than that, the build quality between these two are pretty much, pretty much good. All metal, you can't complain. While both of these gimbals are built quite the same, uh, there's actually similar in price as well. So the Mozwa Air is going to run you $599 US dollars, whereas the Zhiyun Crane is going to run you $649 US dollars. But the Mozwa Air does give you a little bit extra for the best bang of the buck. So we're going to start off with these cables. Uh, there's an assortment of cables here for your Panasonic, your Canon, and your Sony cameras. Depending on which brand of camera you have, you can do a couple extra features. For example, the Panasonic, you can start and stop recording with the power button here. Or if you have a Canon, you can do the start and stop recording on the button here. And there's also a rolling feature on the uh, accessory, this wireless remote, which costs $199. And basically, you'll be able to zoom your camera lens with this rolling rocker here. On top of that, you're also going to get a set of these. So. Well, remember that dual-handed uh, gimbals that I was talking about? You can change this back into a dual-handed gimbal. So if there is a situation where you require that kind of stabilization, Mozwa Air is going to have you covered on that front. Now, they all both come in a nice hard case, which I will grab and show real quick. So, whoop. <laughs> So these are the hard cases that it comes with. You'll notice that you know it's about the same height and size, pretty small. And if you've noticed uh, all the old gimbals, they basically came in something that was reminiscent of a Pelican case and actually a little bit bigger. So when you move to a gimbal like this, your portability is way, way up and you're going to be less tired hauling less gear. Now going back to what all it comes with. They use different batteries, so the Mozwa Air uses the 26350, and you're going to need three of these to power it up. And then for the Zhiyun Crane, you're going to use the 18650s, and you're only going to need two of them. Now, I know you're going to ask, why is that one going to use three small batteries versus this one? 
The way these batteries are set up and how powerful these motors are on the Motua Air, you're going to need a lot more voltage to get this thing running, whereas the Zhuyun Crane has um, not as powerful motors, so the voltage requirement is not as high. That's why there's two different batteries. <clears throat> Now, one thing that we will say, um, both manufacturers, uh, while they give you a charger, they don't actually give you the USB plug that you need. Now, in the era of cell phones, probably everyone has one lying around, but it would be very nice to know that they both should include one for you. Now, the balancing of these gimbals are quite similar. You have controls for going front and back on the bottom plate. And then you have another set over here to raise the cage up and down. You have another one here up top to adjust your left and right, your roll motion. And then the last one is actually down here, which is to control your yaw. Now, if you take a uh, look at the links provided in the, in the write-up blog, we do have um, a set of links to teach you how to balance these gimbals. So I would definitely check that out. This review is being broadcasted live right now and we actually do have some live questions. So one of the questions was, can we attach an external monitor to these single-handed gimbals because they're not dual-handed like we used to? And the answer is yes and sort of, kind of. We haven't really tried, but we're, I'm going to explain it. So right now on the GH5, you see that it has a flip-out screen. So if your DSLR has a flip-out screen, you can pop it right out to the side so it's not covered behind the motor back here and that should help you get a better framing. That being said, the A7S doesn't have it, but because these gimbals are so small and they're basically right in front of your face now, you can see the screen still just fine. But if you're using an external uh, monitor as a recorder, there is probably one way you can do it and I would assume that it works, but I haven't tried. What you're going to do is there's a quarter 20 on the bottom. You can have either have a magic arm or you can have another quarter 20 rod come out this way, what have you. And then you can have the monitor faced here on a, on a tripod ball head. Because the HDMIs are generally on the left side of the camera, it's got a nice short distance to go instead of wrapping through everything on the dual handle to get to the monitor. That being said, if you're using the Montoya Air, you do have the option of attaching the dual handle system and there Therefore, run the gimbal like it used to be back in the day when we didn't have the single-handed gimbals. <clears throat> back in the day. So it is back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to use the Mozua app with your Mozua Air, be sure to turn on the gimbal first. Open your Mozua Assistant app and swipe until you see the picture for the Mozua Air. Then hit the search button, and you should see Air 1847 pop up on the list. Go ahead and select it. On the main menu screen, you'll see some menu items up top. We'll get to that later. In the opening screen, you can perform functions like calibration, gimbal mode selection, and how responsive you want the joystick or your movements to be. In the camera menu, this is where you select the type of camera you are using and how heavy the lens actually is. You will want to do this so that the motors do not over or under compensate for the overall weight and balance of your camera. In the parameters menu, you can decide how powerful and how much range of motion each motor can have. Lastly, in the remote menu, you can control the gimbal when it's out of reach, perfect for those jib and car mount situations. This is where you can also access the cool time lapse feature that we will talk about later. Zhuying also has an app for their crane. It performs similar functions like the Mozua app. You can perform calibration and set parameters for your motors as well as control the gimbal remotely. The only major difference at this time is the missing time-lapse feature that the Mozua app has. One of the cool features of the Mozua Air is there's actually a time-lapse feature. Now you can access this time-lapse feature through the app, which is on iOS right now. The Android version is coming soon. And so basically what you can do is you can program the Mozua Air to hit five very specific points and how long it takes you to go through those five specific points. Now, um, if you're a GH shooter like we are, there's already a built-in time-lapse feature in the camera. So now we can do these really cool sweeping panning moments of like a cityscape while the clouds are flying through it. You know, very reminiscent to stuff you see on Breaking Bad or something like that. So um, if you are a photographer and you love to do some motion time-lapse thing as well as video, uh, the Mozua Air is gonna give you those capabilities.
there is an additional accessory that you can purchase with both of these cameras, and that is a wireless remote. Now, for the Mozua, you're going to be able to get this wireless remote for $199, and then for the Zhiyun Crane, it's going to be $35. Now I know you're going to ask why in the world is this one so much more expensive than the Zhiyun Crane. Well the Zhiyun Crane can do all the basic functions. So you can go up, down, left, right, on, off. You can do the zoom for uh, certain, cam or certain camera brands. Whereas the Mozua Air, not only can you do all of those, but there's also a set of features inside here. So if you don't want to pull out your cell phone app, you can use this to change which camera body you have. Uh, the weight of each setup that you have. There's also the ability to do calibration as well through this remote. And of course, like I said, in the back here, you have the rocker to zoom and zoom out on Canon lenses. Without further ado, here's all the footage from our tests today.
So for this test review, we actually did quite a few things. We had experienced gimbal runners versus the ones that are not experienced gimbal runners. And of course we've done, as you saw through all of this, we did a test on the Nikon D70, which is basically our Canon 5D, if you will, full frame DSLR. We've had the nice midsize range, which is our GH5s um, running with those lenses. And then we have our lightest setup, which is the A7S. So real quickly, we're gonna bring them over to in front of the camera and they're gonna tell you their experiences of running these cameras real quick. Um, oh, my name is Keith Collins and I am a user of both of these gimbals. Uh, I like them both equally. Um, both of them were very good. This one felt a little heavier um, in compared to this one. Also, uh, this gimbal here seemed quicker to set up, um, but both of them were still very easy to use. What kind of camera you use? Uh, the camera that I use most of the time is the Sony A7S. What should I? I have no idea. Well, tell who you are first, right? Yeah. Uh, my name's Dennis. <laughs> I don't. You're a filmmaker? Yeah. Um, I'm Dennis. I'm a filmmaker. Um, and I pretty much only worked with this one here. Um, it seemed to work pretty well. Uh, I don't know how much that's just because I, I don't know the difference between the two. There did seem to be like, as far as like the tilting, like when it had to pan over, that seemed some t what delayed sometimes, but that could just be me not operating it as much as you guys have. So I guess that's it. Do you have any? No? So you only use um, the, the, the... I only use yeah, this guy, he, he so I don't have a comparison both. between oh, okay. the two. I don't know I, what we I can really both. provide. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I use both. Okay. <laughs> Special. Right. So he used the Moza. Well, it's okay. It's still just in general, like, using it. So he used the Moza. Okay, my name is Vitas. And I typically use a Nikon D750. I'm not really all that familiar with, um, you know, working with gimbals, especially, you know, single handheld. I've, you know, rarely even seen them. Um, <laughs> in between the two uh, models, the Moza and, how, how do you pronounce crane. this? The crane? crane. In between the Moza and the crane, I don't really see that too many differences. Um, there is a slight weight difference in between them, and um, response is maybe a little bit different, but it's not noticeable for me, you know, being not too uh, familiar with, familiar with uh, gimbals. Cool. So in conclusion between these two gimbals, I have to honestly say they pretty much perform just about the same. Now, the handling of each one with the Montois Air, there's definitely a whole lot of fine tuning you can do within the app itself and also the desktop app. So you can make the tracking and smoothing faster or slower depending on your shooting style. So for me, I like to have the tracking nice and slow. So when I make the movement, it's going to slowly follow instead of immediately going to where I point it. But if that's the kind of footage you're trying to get in the movie you're trying to make, then you can do that. It does follow quite quickly um, uh, when you set it to its maximum standard. <clears throat> um, as far as the modes you can shoot in, just very much similar to all the gimbals. You have the all locked mode, so no matter what you do, it's just going to keep the camera focused on right in front of you. Or you can have the follow modes that will go up and down, pan left and right or you can just have it only pan left and right while you're following your subject. In terms of everything else, like I said, the build quality of both of these are quite good. And the reason I'm gonna say that is because we actually took this on an action movie shoot, my film, and we ran with these things really, really fast, probably more fast than people would be uh, comfortable with. And we did take a tumble each time, a couple times, and both of these gimbals held up because, again, they're made out of solid metal and they did a wonderful, wonderful job in capturing those running moments for the film. Um, as far as battery life goes, again, that shoot was an eight and a half to nine hour day and we used it extensively for all those running shoots and the gimbals did not run out of juice. 
we didn't actually replace the batteries, we just charged them and went. So as far as how long can they last, they lasted uh, basically an eight hour shoot. Were they on the whole time? No. But chances are when you're shooting those kind of films, you're not running them continuously for eight hours. So from what we can tell on a normal shooting day, um, they were just fine with the batteries they had. That being said, these batteries are quite cheap to purchase. So if you do need another set of batteries, there it's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg. And here's also some footage of the Mozua Air Pre-Production Unit and Zuyin Crane straight out of the box at the Wizard World Comic Con. And that concludes the review of the Mozua Air versus the Zuyin Crane. Now keep in mind the Mozua Air is a pre-production unit and we did find a couple problems that we passed on to Mozua. For instance, when you insert the batteries into the handle and screw it together, sometimes it would spark. And the Mozua Air, they gave you a battery charger but it only charged two batteries when the Mozua Air requires three batteries to operate. So we found that to be kind of an inconvenience. Uh, the camera at its, or the gimbal itself did tend to drift a little bit, so we had to calibrate it like a lot. And we find that, you know, while it's great that you can really calibrate it down to your camera, it does become a hindrance when you have to do it all the time. And the last but not least, the motor seems to be ex uh, exuberating some kind of humming noise, uh, quite audible, whereas the Zuyin Crane has literally no hum at all. Now we have passed all of our findings over to Mozua and they've acknowledged these findings and are working to fix it in the production unit. But uh, since we only have a pre-production unit, if you decide to go with the Mozua Air, please leave a comment down below if these issues have been resolved.
Now, at this time of this recording, Zhuying has actually updated the crane. Now, originally, we didn't think this was a very big deal worth mentioning, but now that Zhuying has actually addressed it, we figure it's worth mentioning now. So basically, what happened with the original Mozua Air Production Unit and Zhuying Crane version 1 is that you had a quarter 20 screw on the bottom of the camera plate. And this allowed you to basically, you know, quickly attach your camera and quickly detach the camera. But what we found was that if you had it centered, it had a tendency to possibly get knocked out of place, which would throw off your balance. And when you would tighten it all the way, your camera is actually going to slowly level itself. Therefore, if you're balancing with it loose, it's not technically balanced until you screw it up all the way. So what they did was they actually just built in a quick release mechanism onto the camera holder itself for the crane. So now it's going to be a lot easier for you to just attach the camera, flip it, and therefore have it a better balance and you would negate the camera shifting side to side. So here's the big question. Do you get the Mozua Air or do you get the Zuyin Crane? Honestly, it really depends on what gear you have and or what you're going to go up to. So if you already use heavier cameras like the Canon 5D and all the way down to the GH5, which is a medium class camera, I'm going to say use the Mozua Air because when you, if you look at our test, the A7S actually jitters a bit because the motors are too powerful. So when they're trying to compensate for such a light camera, it doesn't do it as smoothly. The Zuyin Crane has the opposite problem. It does well with very light cameras up to the GH5. Five, but once you put on, uh, once you hit its weight limit, the motors are too weak, and it's gonna not be able to smooth out the footage as well for you with a heavier camera. Now that being said, while we're saying that Zoom Crane can do 3.9 pounds and the Mozart Air can do 5.5 pounds, you really can't just use those numbers and say it's going to be okay. Because the problem you're going to run into is you're going to have a GH5 with a really awesome long zoom lens on it. And yes, it's only going to be four pounds. But the problem is, is the balance is too far away from the camera's body. And what you end up doing is you're going to compensate and move everything back towards the motor. And then suddenly you're hitting the motor and you're not able to actually use your gimbal as it's intended. So that being said, a rule of thumb is you want the body to be the heaviest and then the lens to just not to not be the heaviest basically. So use prime lenses. Prime lenses are a great way because they are much smaller than a long zoom lens and therefore you're going to be able to keep the weight towards the back. Now some people will also ask, well okay, well what should I do as far as using the gimbal and focusing? Chances are you're not going to want to use autofocus unless maybe you're using Sony's uh, phase detection with their 6500. That seems to do quite well. But generally what you want to do is you want to set the focus either to infinity so that you know everything beyond a certain point is in focus. Or if you really need to follow a subject with that nice blurred background, then you want to make sure you set the focus and stay that distance the whole time through your shots. So. Just because you have a gimbal, you can move the camera around nice and smoothly. You still need to take in consideration of how you're going to keep your subject in focus. And using those two ways are, is going to help you with your cinematography.